This episode has been sponsored by Skillshare. Welcome to Crimson Guitars. You all are here to watch me build a bass. Apparently in the comments, uh, the consensus is that I'm building a fan fret, fretless, six string, semi-acoustic upright with an odd bridge, a trim. <sighs> Aren't all trims odd bridges? Uh, a multi-laminate neck with LEDs and sliding, <laughs> sliding pickups and a body made of brass rods. Not today. We are limited by the hardware I have, which is gold and four string. Quarter pound P bass pickups by Seymour Duncan. We've also got a cat that's meowing to get in. Oh, let's build. Let's build an instrument, shall we? Burn it. Perfect. <laughs> now, I have got a chunk of uh, ebony rough sawn on both sides, which is not ideal, and a mahogany neck. I've honestly lost a bit of wood. And by a bit of wood, I mean a bass guitar sized blank of ash. So this is the body. It is a really interesting piece of uh, English ash, relatively weighty. It's got all of these gorgeous inclusions and random bits and pieces. And it's also got some flaming and some figuring. Uh, there is a live edge, although that I'm sure will be, uh, will be gone. This is a J type bass template and the, the nut here is about 38 or so, whereas a P-type is 43. I don't want to use this template for the neck, so we're gonna, we're gonna do something else. But uh, at the very least, at the very least it gives me something that tells me that blank is just about the right size. And the most interesting thing for me is the size of the headstock. Um, it's not quite in the center of the headstock and I want to, if at all possible, keep the headstock out of the one piece. This then allows me to say, basically, my center line needs to be around about there. Now the other thing is I want to use this relatively plain side to run my truss rod route off. So I need the center line, wherever it is, to run parallel to that. A J base nut width or a P base nut width. Um, you guys let us know. Oh, and by the way, it's going to be fretless. If I'm using this template like this, I'll end up using the router table. So I don't particularly want the truss rod to be going through the back of the, the neck there. And it's slightly longer but that's fine, it'll be underneath the fretboard there. Work holding is seriously important. All right, I'm gonna start at the nut, which is nearest the headstock, which is the most important section, and then crack on from there. Lift up the depth stop, move that over there, drop the depth stop. That depth there is now set with the depth of the, of the body, and uh, of the body, of the top of the wood that you're working on. And I want to go nine mil deep. So that's a fraction deeper. And this depth stop here is hollow. So as I go down, it'll go down to that thing. Extraction nose, power, marked out. I'm going to put a clamp at the end to physically stop me from going any further than I want to. Okay. Whenever you're writing something like that, always do it in several passes because uh, it's much, much safer. I'm gonna square off the ends at both sides. And this rod here, it's a little bit wider. So we're gonna have to do some chiseling. Knock it out a fraction. The weld here sometimes uh, gets in the way. Right, oh, in that pole, what does the pole say? Yeah, we can end it. It's 56% uh, uh, J base nut width. Phew, okay, that's excellent. Well, that's really good then. What we've got, this is gonna be a jazz bass style, but with a P bass pickup. This is a really chunky piece of uh, sapili here, and it is thick enough 
to make two of this style neck. Uh, I don't like wasting wood, so I'm going to I'm going to chop it down. This is fun. I, I like starting new projects. I don't seem to be very good at finishing old ones. This episode has been sponsored by Skillshare. I am incredibly happy to be partnering with them. I'm a fan of learning. I'm a fan of online learning in particular. Recently, I've been going through a class uh, with, uh, I don't know, he's a certain Marquez Brownlee. It's a name that you would remember if you'd ever heard it before, I'm sure. Um, he's awesome. The class here is YouTube success, script, shoot, and edit with MKBHD. That rings a bell. This is more aimed towards people who are getting into YouTube. And since we're doing the Great Guitar Build-Off again this year, and hundreds of people are entering that competition and making uh, their own videos and wending their merry way into the YouTube landscape, I thought that I would watch a little bit of this and see. And frankly, even though I've been doing this for a decade or more, I'm learning stuff by watching this and taking part in this class. So, you know, check it out, especially if you're in GGBO. The first 1,000 people to click the link below or use the code Crimson Guitars will get a one month free trial of Skillshare. Skillshare covers the gamut. You have got everything from accountancy to uh, advertising. I wanted to hit the A's. Awesome alliteration with Arnold, uh, I've, I've, I've lost it. Finish it in the comments. Uh, back to the guitar, the bass. Back to the bass. The blank isn't quite big enough, but that's okay. We're not actually doing a completely traditional J bass. Um, the, we're using these Goto, yeah, it, is, it is standard, uh, with the relatively small bodies, not those giant things. So we can actually lose 10 mil off the side of that quite happily. A lot of people ask, I use the uh, Graphgear 1000 by Pentel, and I tend to, when I'm drawing on wood, use the 0.9 millimeter lead. My honest opinion is start with something that already exists. You don't necessarily need to give a toss about the actual shape, but the positioning of the holes and the strings, just doing that has just saved me probably 10 or 20 minutes worth of messing around. I'm going to cut away this excess here, leave all of that square for now. Let me think about this. So we've got we've got a cool edge there. I do think I I I, I do want to have that sort of kubiki kind of a, a very straight lined thing at some point. Anything I do here is absolutely derivative. Every single line I draw is based on or is something that somebody else has somebody else has designed. But uh, I think I'm quite happy with that. I think that uh, it's fairly derivative, but it's also pointy, it's lighter weight. I can take off a little bit more as I go. I could also um, do some, I could have some fun with that.
I'm going to put the template in place on the on the neck and uh, then <laughs> clear off the router table. I'm just going to run a couple of pieces of tape down either edge. Okay, now when you're doing this, it's important not to use the shiny masking tape, and blue tape, that sort of stuff, that is, it doesn't, the, the super glue doesn't stick to it in the middle of the tape. A little bit of super glue. Okay, just pushing that down a little bit. Alrighty, that worked almost perfectly. There's a bit of tear out here, which is uh, annoying. So yeah, that's that's annoying. We're gonna have to fill that with dust and glue. Most of it's gonna be uh, carved out with the carve of the neck. Anyhow, I set your tunes away. You should check out the new isotunes, the isotunes uh, free aware. Ah, uh, very cool. <clears throat> okay. I do not use router tables on headstocks. I've had too much pain uh, doing that. Let's get the fretboard on. We'll sand the headstock after that so that the curve is nice and done. Uh, just for fun, I'll chop that off quickly then. There we go, a small bit of masking tape rolled around itself with the sticky side out. And that, just bang in the middle, will do the job nicely. I just dropped my masking tape. Idiota. So yeah, same, same thing, masking tape wrapped around itself with the sticky side out so it stays in place. And we want to do that in the middle here. And actually, I don't have room at the end of the neck there, but uh, there's a little bit of play here. So we just want to fill, fill this gap. I find myself wondering if hot glue could be of use with this. Oh, would you look at that? It's prettier, it's a base fretboard, and it's perfectly plain. Yes, I can find what I'm looking for. <laughs> that is that is absolutely really not ideal. That's essentially what we're going to end up with. It's quite cool. And while I'm about it, I'm going to use the template as a clamping call. Alkaline Professional, low volatile organic compound aliphatic resin. For the longest time, I put masking tape over the truss rod channel. Um, and I've come to the conclusion that it actually, that's not necessary. But uh, that's the way it was done in uh, in the first book that I really listened to, uh, which was Martin Koch um, on guitar building, something like that. OK, 
Okay, so the big hole is just off the edge and we're good. That's lined up. Now, I've been told that when you are clamping up a neck, you should do it from one end to the other. If you start at either end and then clamp in like so, uh, or from the center out, you might be putting in tension. And you don't want that. Now after this, we're gonna crack on with a body. All right, on with the G-clamps, just because. Okay, so there we go, that's, that's done. Just check that we're all good. And then visually inspect and see how much squeeze out. You don't want huge amounts, but you do want to see glue pretty much everywhere. And, uh, and no gaps. Or at the very least, minimal. Minimal. <laughs> minimal gaps. There we go, he didn't give me that. So here comes the fun stuff. This is a really rather stunning bit of ash. I've got a few pieces uh, from the same plank, and I've been waiting for the right project. All right, in general, I would say, Especially when you're designing, oh, you see that's the smaller pencil. That's the 0.7 and they just break. Where possible, start with an existing shape just to give you an idea of, of dimensions and, and the like. So I've worked out my 20th fret and that is 591.85, 864 minus 591.85 equals 27215. So my bridge, my bridge is there. And this is the bridge we're using. Go to, my gosh, this stuff is good. There's the bridge line going through, roughly. Loads of space here. I'm happy with that. And this isn't actually an easy piece of wood. It's really hard to see what I'm doing because of all of the extra chaos and carnage. Yeah, this really is not easy to, not easy to see. I'm, I'm actually thinking a sort of a, I'm thinking more of a single cut kind of a shape. Every base you've ever seen almost has a, has a double cut thing going on. That works. Then we have a, a cutaway carve half going there. Now that I'm not actually doing woodwork right now, it sort of feels like I'm wasting time. But if you don't do the planning, then the whole thing doesn't work. See, that's the thing. Vintage style bridge, vintage style pickup, and suddenly a modern, a more modern feel doesn't necessarily work. Now I've gone away and I've removed a huge amount of material where the neck pocket is, so I can't do that. It has to come up sort of to there at the minimum.
with some calves. The calf changes the whole shape of the instrument from a point of view of how it feels. Mm -hmm. That shape there I like, that shape there I like, the slightly offset I like. We've got a very non-standard thing going on here. I like that and then you go in with a carve and you add that's what there it is. I'm going to turn my mic off, go to the bandsaw, and from there I'm going to go to the um, to the spindle sander to finalize the shape. This this might evolve a little bit as we go. I really really am rather happy. And this is where we uh, regret, or don't. Fine, I am gonna move over to the oscillating spindle sounder and get the outline finalized because really, I don't wanna change anything about this. I'm really, really, really happy with this. Back in a second. Don't touch it anyway. Challenge accepted. Squirrels are at it again. Excellent, I like these squirrels and I'm glad that you guys had fun in my absence. You seem to be laboring under the misapprehension that I have a sense of humor, but you know. <laughs> I just need to go to the bandsaw and chop that off. I need to go in. Eh, forget chiseling, let's just round it. We are four hours into this custom bass guitar build. I have sorted out the shape now. We have finalized the outline on the oscillating spindle belt sander. I've just routed the pickup and the start of the neck pocket. I still need to sort out control cavity and, uh, and a break angle. Essentially, so the thing is that is the nearest point there. And it is so much fatter than the nearest point on this side of the guitar. Whereas at this point, if I cut that away, it's much closer and it gives the whole thing 
a better feel, in my opinion. Uh, I need to go on the bandsaw, uh, cut away the excess fretboard, and then onto the um, onto the router table and route away the excess uh, side of the fretboard from there. I've now got these ends here because I want that to overhang the fretboard. And this is where the hand tools come in. It's a relatively straightforward and easy process. I'm running the back of the plane off on the, the neck. And slowly it's going forward. There we go. Now I was sincerely hoping that this was going to be a fretless guitar bass instrument bass musical thing. Then use the Crimson Guitars protractor here to, which has got a zero in the center so you can see, and at any point it should be, should be centered. Just to double check. Uh, I need to sort out the radius uh, here before I go and do any fret work of any sort. I'm just cutting off the excess bit of fretboard here. Long plane again, just to make sure it's nice and flat. The long, the jointed plane has a finer, finer cut. So it's a little bit more precise. I'm gonna go over at an angle. Yeah. About 18 or so there. 15. And about 12 of the nut. Leveling beam. The nut end of the fretboard there scoops out into the headstock shapes and that's confusing the hell out of my eye. So I'm just gonna chop that off. So I've now got my, my radius and my center line. And now you have the center line, you can mark out fret slots, etc. Okay, so that is sorted. I'm gonna use the fret calculator here to draw where my frets need to go. So we've got that sorted then. I've marked out where they wanna go. It's just a question of going down with that and marking them out. you're going to do something like this, make sure that everything is nice and solid.
while you're cutting the thread slot. Also a good time to mark up the uh, nut. Those are done. That has actually worked out rather well. I do need access to the truss rod. So let's uh, crank the neck back down again and get drilling. Alright, people, I think we're going onto the lathe. Use the center drill to start things off. That's uh, 11, 11.2. that I can actually go at it now. So, so yeah, the brass is a fraction too big. Put it in the drill, high speed. Now look at that. That puts me off my stride. Uh, the file made the end of this mildly abrasive, so that actually opened the hole out to the size I needed, which is pretty cool. That'll be about there. I'm going to use some, some 5 minute epoxy. I'm waiting for this glue to dry, which is problematic. I've got some routing to do with that. I don't want to do inlays. Let's, let's sand the fretboard. So many people doubted this shape. I absolutely love it. One, two. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve, thirteen, fourteen, fifteen, sixteen, seventeen, eighteen, nineteen. I collect random bits of stuff that could potentially at some point be turned into guitars, inlays, stuff. Okay, so this is tiny, tiny brass. It is two millimeters exactly. This isn't going to take a huge amount of time to do then. All right, so we've marked out the positions. I just want to go with a an all. Crack on. So I have got my Famag center, center point, what are they? Profi HSS. Uh, anyway, there is one here that has a two millimeter, it's a two mil center point drill bit, is absolutely amazingly cool. And I'm just going to crack on with this. Put 
next build? What would you like to see me make next? Holy Cody. Salifa? I'll just leave. She's so naughty. Okay, so I'm using some brown, brown super glue. And um, you just uh, whack that in. You can either chop it off above the quite far above the edge of the fretboard, which means that where it's collapsed uh, doesn't affect things. But that then means that you need to go and bevel the edge. Install the inlay. Bum, 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 bum. Okay, so that's good. little drill. <laughs> so this is a, a sub one millimeter wide drill bit in a little Archimedean type tool and uh, yeah it does it does really well and we're going to mix up a little bit of glow in the dark. Glow in the dark, eh? yeah glow in why does that sound weird to me? I think that's probably more than enough. Yep. So that is now glow in the dark pigment mixed in epoxy. And it just needs to be spooged into each one of these holes. Now the problem is there's an air pocket behind it so I'm going to apply over each one of the holes and then push it in with that uh, little drill bit again. What I'm thinking is we should make this fretless and flood the flood the now cut fret slots with, with, glow in the dark. with glow in the dark epoxy. It has been just over seven hours in this build, uh, stopped a few times, spent quite a bit of time talking, but uh, you know, it's fairly, it's fairly good going. We have made a neck from scratch. It has got a truss rod, uh, fender style headstock. We've got an ebony fretboard that is now slotted and has side dot inlays made out of brass tube with glow-in-the-dark powder internally and on top of that just for fun we've got a brass tube that uh, next week once it is fully cured will be cut away and it will make an interesting uh, uh, surround to the truss rod access and then on top of that uh, we took this one piece ash blank and created a unique and custom uh, bass guitar shape this is going to be carved quite a lot next week uh, we are currently considering whether to use glow-in-the-dark powder inside all of these uh, inclusions. Um, tempting, very tempting. Uh, the neck is probably going to be bolt-on, I think, but uh, I'm not absolutely set on that, so we shall see. Uh, it needs another pickup if we're going to go fretless, uh, which is uh, something that's currently being considered. Anyway, let me know what you think in the comments uh, of this design and of this shape. Uh, the neck doesn't quite fit in the cavity just yet. It is a little bit more fretly. And this is not working. Ta-da! I think I love it.